Libra. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for January of 2023. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kill Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. I'm Julie Mijas in San Francisco, California. Let's take a look at January for you, Libra. I do want to start with two of our favorite asteroid goddesses, Juno and Ceres. Juno starts the month in late Pisces because she's been traveling through Pisces for quite a few months, since July really, and I've talked about it so much in the last several horoscopes that I'm not going to even say anything about it today, but I do want you to know that she is about to actually change signs, <clears throat> moving into Aries right here around January 12th. And Juno is an asteroid goddess of relationship, particularly marriage and committed partnership. She's also a social maven. She likes to weave the fabric of society together. And so wherever Juno appears, you can put attention on partnerships or put <coughs> partnership attention on things, on things in your partnership. So she's moving into the seventh house, which is the domain of a relationship full stop. And so she's very happy and comfortable here. <clears throat> and would really love you to spend the next, you know, the rest of this month and the next month on uh, putting, you know, some attention into your partnership and uh, and doing some negotiating and figuring out what's fair and maybe codifying some parts of your partnership. If you've been thinking about making changes in uh, in how your relationship goes and the rules of the road and the structures of it, this would be a really good month for doing that. And I think it's a really good month for enjoying your partnership and um, and just really showing up as a partner to your partner. <clears throat> so that's some pretty good stuff. Juno will be there for at least the rest of this month and into next month as well. And then the other planet I want to talk about is Ceres right here in the first house. Now, Ceres is going to be in your sign, Libra, for quite a few months to come because she is slowing down and about to go retrograde at the beginning of February. <clears throat> Ceres is the asteroid goddess to do with the things that connect us to the physical world. So she's about our bodies, the food we eat, and the money that we make. And so she's a very practical goddess, very earthy and tangible world. Having her appear in your first house says it's really time, Libra, to put some attention on your physicality. <clears throat> I think that Ceres would like it if you stopped wearing clothes that are uncomfortable and that hurt your body, like those shoes that look great but pinch your toes, or you know, those dresses that realistically you're maybe never gonna fit into again. And I think that Ceres would like you to have a better life of the body, to pay some really good attention to your health going forward and the routines and rhythms that you need in order to do that. And um and to also maybe let go of some body image psychology that, that you've been holding on to. You know, series is about the seasons that our bodies go through in our lifetime. <clears throat> and they're very realistic and not at all fantasy oriented. So what I mean is that, you know, how your body was and what it needed and what it needed to eat when you were 10 is very, very different from what it needs when you're 20. Um, and if you are a woman and you undertake a pregnancy, your needs change again, and then postpartum, they change again and then again in, in our elder years. And so Ceres would really like you to do a, a strong check-in with yourself about realistically, where is my body? Uh, let's do an inventory. How is my health? And what do I need to be, you know, living into now in the season of life that my body is in? So Ceres is going to have a lot more for you about that as she goes retrograde and really asks you to make some changes. And, um, and some of those changes might be financial too. So watch for our video in upcoming months about, um, about Ceres retrograde. Hey, Julia, what's up with Venus, Mercury, and Mars for the Libras of the world this month? 
That's a good question, Jamie. Hey there, Libra. I will start with your ruling planet, Venus, the planet of art, beauty, and relationships, all things very, very familiar to you. Um, Venus is moving pretty quickly now, and she's going to traverse three different houses. Mm -hmm. um, she's only going to spend January 1st in your fourth house, so she's just there for the first day of the year. The fourth house is the house of family and home. And so she was mainly in your fourth house for December, which is great because that was just in time for the holidays. Um, having Venus in your fourth house means that you probably wanted to be a little bit of a homebody. Maybe you didn't go out New Year's Eve, or maybe you went home early. <laughs> um, then on January 2nd, Venus enters your fifth house, and Venus loves to be in this house. Um, this house represents your children. It represents dating. It also represents fun, hobbies, creativity. So with Venus in your fifth for most of the month, if you do have children, it's a great time for getting along really, really well with them, spending some quality time together. And if you're single, you have some, let's say you have some New Year's resolutions to get out there and date. Um, this will be the good, a good month to start doing that. And uh, it's also a great month for anything that's creative, whether you like to design or craft or paint. And if you do have a partner, then you guys are going to want to hit the town uh, instead of staying at home and just kind of enjoy um, shared fun activities together. Then by January 26, Venus enters your sixth house, and um, the sixth house is a house of organization. It's the house of your workplace as well as your health. Um, so by the end of the month, it's going to be great if you need to get a jump start on some spring cleaning, uh, because Venus, wherever Venus is, we find some pleasure, and the sixth house is a very orderly place. So, you know, by the end of the month, good time to kind of clean out your closets, go, go through all your clothes see what you don't need anymore or organize your hard drive and it's great for getting along well with the people you work with mm -hmm. um so if you have clients if you have a boss if you have co-workers um you know you could be feeling very chummy at the workplace um and it's a nice transit for health too especially if you need to start a new health routine but Venus is a bit indulgent, so maybe not the easiest for diets. Um, and then Mercury, the planet that represents your mind, starts the month retrograde. And this is occurring in your fourth house. Again, that's the house of family and home. So you might be dealing with some mis miscommunications with family members um, during this cycle. And since the fourth house represents your physical home, you could be spending a lot of time reviewing or rethinking things that have to do with your home. Maybe you're thinking, oh, is this the year that I move? Is this the year that I buy a home or sell a home? Um, but there could be a lot of review and rethinking um, around all things that are domestic. Then by January 7th, uh, Mercury is actually going to conjoin the sun while retrograde, so during the retrograde cycle. And we call that lesser epiphany day uh, versus greater epiphany day, which is going to happen later when Mercury, Mercury conjoins the sun while direct. But in either event, uh, epiphany days are times of insights and since the cycle is happening in your fourth house, you could be having some aha moments, um, maybe regarding any miscommunications you've had with family members, or even um, about your planning and strategizing around your home place. Then by January 18th, Mercury finally goes direct, um, which means that these miscommunications are going to slowly, slowly um, get a little bit more clearer. And then I'd say by the end of the month, Mercury is back up to speed, going his regular um, speed in the sky. And and that's when we can count the full retrograde cycle to be done. Um, and then the other good news is that Mars is going to go direct this month. Mars has been retrograde for a few months now. Um, these retrograde cycles of Mars, they happen less frequently than Mercury, about once every two years. And they also happen for longer. Now, Mars represents action and activity, and uh, he's been retrograde in your ninth house for a few months now. The ninth house is a travel house. It's also a house of education. It's a legal house, um, and it has to do with just anything that broadens your horizons in general. So if you've had to travel during the last month or so, um, you know, especially during the Mercury retrograde cycle with Mars uh, retrograde in the ninth, it may have been a particularly frustrating time. Um, um, maybe a lot of delays, maybe things that just really irritate you and see your ire. Um, Mars retrograde in the ninth house, if you're involved in anything legal, 
um, you may have had to kind of go back over it in some way. Uh, Mars retrograde, the word I think of for Mars retrograde is redoing because Mars is um, the, pla the planet of action. Um, and if you are in school or applying to schools, there might be a lot of having to redo uh, certain things in your education, maybe rewriting papers or maybe reapplying, uh, for example. Then on January 10th, Mars finally, finally goes direct and we're not going to have to deal with it retrograde for another couple of years. So that's pretty nice. Yes. So we have a couple of moons to talk about. January 6th is the first one of the month and it's a full moon landing right here in your house of career and work opposite the sun with Mercury here in your fourth house of home and family. <clears throat> the moon uh, when full is generally more emotional in the first place, but then when you throw in a water moon, such as moon in Cancer, uh, there can be very high emotion and that can land in whatever house the moon is in during, you know, it's full time. And that would be the 10th house, which is the domain of career. So definitely watch out for emotional outbursts, watch out for surges of emotion coming up in yourself, uh, along with, you know, the attendant potential tantrums or even childish behavior. Um, and uh, and this can also be a wonderful outpouring of nurture and care. We're calling this moon hard work and deep care uh, because of the emphasis on hardworking Capricorn as opposed to nurturing and caring Cancer. But you have these in the houses opposite to the signs that they are ruled by. So Capricorn usually would feel more comfortable in the 10th house. Cancer would feel more comfortable in the 4th house. And here they are reversed to each other. So you may feel pulled to hard to work hard and uh, show logic and the rational and be very no nonsense in your home during this moon and yet be feeling all manner of emotions in your career. This could all land actually in your relationship as well because Chiron is here in square to the moon bringing up old wounds to the surface. So watch out for emotional arguments with your partner during this moon as well. We say a lot more about these moons in the videos that we've made about them, and those are in our um, news playlist for January 2023 on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology. So you should definitely check those out to find out more about these moons. The next event that I want to tell you about is the change of season. <clears throat> when the sun leaves Capricorn and moves into Aquarius. So it does spend most of the month over here in the fourth house, bringing a lot of attention to the, the domain of home and family. And uh, while that is lovely, I talked about it a lot last month. So I want to focus on how you can best bring your attention to the fifth house arena when the sun moves here. And it'll be here for about 30 days. The fifth house arena is the, the house of children and creativity and self-expression and also fun and entertainment. <clears throat> Wherever the sun goes, it's good to bring your high quality attention. It's good to bring the sunlight of that because then things can flourish and grow. This being a house of fun, isn't it about time you had some? especially after that moon uh, where the sun was in Capricorn. Uh, you may have found that you really had your nose to the grindstone there early in the month. But now that the sun has moved into the fifth house, I think you're going to want to play more. And if you have kids, it's a really great time to have fun with them and put some attention on them and let you know, let them know how proud you are of them because kids always need that kind of sunlight from you. <clears throat> and... Um, then we see that very quickly after the sun moves into this house, the moon joins it here in early Aquarius. Um, and this one we're calling Nurture the Tribe uh, for some fairly obvious reasons, because this is a moon in Aquarius and Aquarius has to do with friendship, networks, groups, the people of like mind that you feel a sense of belonging with. The moon brings in that quality of nurture too, and then there's a lovely connection over here with Jupiter and Juno and another one with Ceres, really making this moon quite festive and fun and playful. Especially for you, it would not be at all a bad idea to throw a big party um, or uh, to, uh, to attend a big party. 
And um, maybe because of that series landing in the first house, you could be the one who brings the excellent food that's likely to be there, uh, which I mentioned in the moon video about this moon. So a really great time for celebration, for expressing yourself, being yourself, and really bringing yourself to those groups that you belong to. That's all for today. And... We love making these horoscope videos for you, Libra. And if you love them too, please do hit that like button and let the world know how you feel and let YouTube know how you feel because that benefits all of us. Let your friends know about our horoscopes too. Have a gorgeous January. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.